I've only been to L.A. once, but uh, it was just a quick trip. But apparently in L.A. there are murals all over the place, and some of them are just, um, just really graffiti. But then some of them are pieces of art. I mean, literally there are tours that go around and, and do mural tours of buildings, like walls that have painted been painted and, and, and they're beautiful. So I want to show you a picture of a wall that had been painted. It's a, like a beautiful green um, mountainous forest sort of painting on this wall. And then a local gang decided that they didn't like that. So what they did to that wall Can you see the mountains behind? It was beautiful. It was uh, those who had made it wanted to give people, I think, a sense of um, just uh, kind of a, a, a different way of looking at life or a sense of uh, fresh air or whatever as they were driving by just, just to, I don't know, just to have a different thought than maybe the the race that they were rushing in. And then, then somebody decided that that beauty wasn't what should be done. And so they went and they spray paint those words over top. What they did to that wall. Now as as totally opposite as you can get from what was done on that wall is what God wants us to be. And there, there's more than one passage that says God wants us instead of that kind of thing. He wants us to be Shiners. It doesn't actually say shiners, but it does say in a couple of different ways that God wants us to shine. It's so different than what we just saw on that wall. God is looking for shiners. All right, let me show you one of the verses. It goes like this. It's out of Philippians 2, and it says, Do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Because complaining and arguing is not shining. Okay, that's the first, first sentence of this passage. And then it goes on, and it says this to us. Instead of complaining and doing stuff that's just basically going to keep up the bad momentum going. Here's what we should do. We should live clean, innocent lives as children of God. Here's the shining part. Shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and Perverse people. So different than that picture of whatever it said, acid boys. Okay, let's back up, look at uh, that first, first sentence again. It says, to you and I, in a world where there's a lot of acid boy stuff going on. And there is, isn't there? I mean... You know, I want to keep up with the news, and so I'm always watching the daily news, but, man, there's a lot of acid boy stuff going on. And so it says, as children of God, wherever you work, you know, certainly in church, uh, wherever you spend 
time during each day, whatever that might be. As a child of God, when there's so much of that stuff going on, it says do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. When we see the stuff that goes on in life that's so discouraging and so evil, and it's just, it literally is day after day after day. It is sound bite after sound bite after sound bite. You know, it's easy, isn't it, just to get caught up in that negativity? It's so easy. And so, the Bible is saying, you know what, as a child of God, I don't want you to get caught up in that stuff and just be one more complaining voice. And arguing over stuff. It's okay to voice your opinion, but a lot of what goes on today is just purely arguing and nothing gets done. And the Bible says, I, I, I just don't want you to be one more of that. Because deep down, even people that don't go to church, deep down people know that somebody who is is um goes to church and loves God shouldn't shouldn't really be getting into that level of stuff. What happens is when there's so much acid boy stuff going on and messing up the beauty, as we can easily get a case of the GNTs. You know, the general negative tones. With all the negative, it's so easy just to become one more negative voice. And, and I'm just going to give you six that are real easy to fall into. There's so many. Uh, but for instance, you know, we, we complain about our job. And um, I've, I've worked, uh, I don't know, two or three other jobs besides ministry that for a long enough period of time that I realize that when you get to work complaining about your job or about those in leadership at your job or in leadership in general, those are easy. Those are easy targets. It's low-hanging fruit. It's, it takes little to no creativity, and it's an easy way to start conversations. Or it's an easy way to just jump in and join it. But these are general, these are GNTs. These are like general negative. It's just we're one more voice. And I also know from working other jobs that it honestly becomes like a second language. That whole thing of complaining. Is so easy to do. Or um, complaining about the price of, or complaining about those who have less, those who have more. We, we tend to, those that have less than us are targets. And especially those who have more than us, it's easy to complain about. And, of course, those who aren't like us. Or how about this one? Just all out, flat out, complaining about that wall. <laughs> there's, there's never an end of stuff to complain about. Especially when acid boy stuff's going on. 
And I know, I know how easy it is. I know. But what Scripture says is instead of just falling into that, instead of just taking that easy route, Here's an idea, it says in Philippians. How about living clean, innocent? Innocent in this sense just means don't fall into that junk, that negativity, the general negative tones. But live as children of God and shine like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. See, where I'm going with this thought in this series is that God has a big picture of shine. Somehow through all the negativity and the junk and the evil and the whining and the complaining and the G and what do I call it? General negative T's, tones. Somehow in all of that, God is still trying to paint. And he has painted a picture of beauty. God just... Need some people to keep bringing it out. And this whole idea of big picture, remember the whole deal we've talked about with the elephants, that there was six blind men, and you know they, of course, had never seen an elephant before, and each one of them are reaching out and touching a different part of the elephant and assuming that that's what the elephant is like. And so one grabs the tail and says, well, an elephant is also obviously like a rope. And one grabs the tusk and said that an elephant, well, elephant is obviously like a spear. And see, we like the blind men. We reach out in our blindness and we start feeling around life. You know, we, we feel and we hear the negativity all around us at work and in, on the news and on the internet and everywhere. It's negative, negative, it's always negative. When we reach out, and the tendency is just to say, that's what it is, and I'm just going to be part of it. But there's a, there's a big picture where God is still every day trying to shine behind the clouds. And he needs shiners to do that. I want you to look at this wall again. What they did to that wall. Who is they? When we hear that, when we hear that title, like, who is they? Well, you can look at they in different ways. Maybe we could even be they. In some way, let me give you some of the the options. Obviously, the first they that we think about are the people who destroyed it. Look what they did to that wall. But there's another they. There is the people who painted it. Look what they did to that wall so beautiful it adds life it make it just gives people a sense of refreshment as they're driving by and they put their mind and you know in just another place even just for five seconds people can kind of breathe in their busyness look what they did the beauty how they created something you know or look what they did to that There's people that are fixing it. I 
I found this this picture originally on um, I don't know somewhere. I think it was on Twitter, and someone was was uh, had this picture, and and so so they were saying, man, this wall was so wonderful. I used to walk past it and was so energized, and then acid boys come along and destroy it. But when he took this picture, part of his tweet was, but as bad as that is, there are some people that are fixing it. There are some people that are resisting in love. Not another, uh, not not resisting in some negative way, but they're resisting in love. Can you see them? Um, the, the person describes it and says, these two, these two guys are, they have masks on, you know, like the kind when you, when you go into a hospital room, when somebody has some kind of infectious disease. And you wear those masks. You know how hot those things are. And imagine the heat of L.A. and wearing that thing. They have masks because they're having to work with chemicals. And this guy who tweets this 11 days later, he goes past it again and he says, it's still not finished. Still not. They're, they're only about three quarters of the way. And at this point, they're only, they've only cleared off maybe three feet or so. And they're scrubbing away what they did. So you can look at they in different ways. One is the people who destroyed it. And secondly is the people who painted it and actually created something. And thirdly is the people who are fixing it. So here's where I'm going with this. When God says he wants you and I to shine, there's different ways that that works. Sometimes shining involves creating. Look what they did to that wall. How beautiful. That somebody had the idea to just add life and to brighten someone's life, to brighten the life of those that they'll never talk to or see, just people that are driving by. They just wanted to add some beauty and value to this world. Look what they did. They created something. And sometimes shining is creating, and God wants you and I in an acid boy world. He wants you and I at work when it's just full of bickering and complaining. He wants you and I when, he see, when we see trash in the parking lot to be creative. And to bring change to the world. Sometimes shining is creating in the bad junk that's going on. Instead of complaining and arguing and sometimes being just as bad as the ones that we're complaining about in our forms of complaining, instead of complaining and arguing, finding some way to add life, and create. Sometimes shining is creating, and sometimes, frankly, shining is just getting back to zero. Like those two people that are doing this in the heat of an L.A. day with the hot masks on and working with dangerous chemicals. 
you know, what, however long it took them, two and a half weeks, I don't know. But you know what happened at the end of two and a half weeks? They just got back to zero. They just got it back to the way it was. And that's all they were able to do. But that is sometimes what shining is. When people mess up God's plans, sometimes, and some of you spend a large amount of your time, moms, others, some of you at work, you spend a large amount of your time instead of being able to create like you'd like to, some of you spend a lot of your time just getting it back to zero. And that's part of creating because when God's beauty is messed up, He needs people that will in love and with a good attitude instead of jumping in and complaining and fighting and arguing. So he needs people that will clean it up in the name of God. So, uh, j- just, a, just a reminder, Galatians 6, 9. You, you see that first sentence, so let's not get tired. God knows, you know, creating is energizing. That part of shining, energizing. Uh, for instance, This church is in the process of creating all year long, trying to create life and hope. Like, um, it wasn't that many weeks ago that on a Sunday afternoon, right after church, we give blood. Have you ever heard of that before? Who's ever done that? What church? The end of church. And it's not like glory to us. It's just like that's what we're supposed to do. It's shining. It's creating life. And like last night when we have some volunteers that go to a new ministry for the homeless and talk about a godsend of a time to start it. A new ministry for the homeless. And that is the act of shining, creating Creating something of life and hope for a world that's got a lot of acid boy stuff in it. And so we have a group last night that volunteered to, to help. And, and tonight, uh, by the way, you know, last night was just kind of an opening thing. But tonight, um, there, are, there are now literally people, that, homeless people that are going to be staying there tonight. And um, Okay, so that's great. But look. Um, that's energizing, and that, man, that pumps us up. But you know what? Another part of creating, another part of shining is just getting things back to zero. And when you spend much of your time or any of your time just getting something back to zero, there is a sense of weariness in that. And Scripture recognizes it, and so Scripture says, I get it that you get tired and just getting back to zero. But don't... <laughs> With the help of God, don't get tired of doing what is good. Because at just the right time, there's going to be some kind of blessing for it. Some kind of harvest. As you're scraping off the stuff, and you're just picking up the stuff, and you're getting back to zero, and you're, you're trying to do the right things, I know it's hard, and you get tired. But the Bible says, God has something good. At, at a sometime time that you don't know. But the thing is, if you don't give up. And there's another one just as quickly as it says. So when you do stuff like getting back to zero, do it. Do it as though you're doing it for the Lord. Sometimes people will appreciate it, and sometimes people will say thank you, and a lot of times people won't even notice. And sometimes at work, you're working for people that should notice and don't give you a thank you or whatever it might be, your family or whatever, but you know what? 
when you're just getting back to zero, have the attitude of doing it for God rather than people. So sometimes shining is creative. Uh, sometimes shining is getting back to zero. And sometimes, finally, as shiners, we are to be illuminating. Not ourselves, but God. When we're shining, we're not shining the spotlight back on us. When we're shining, it may even appear that we're shining it on the particular project we're working on, but Scripture would say that ultimately when we shine, we are shining so that a world full of acid boy stuff can somehow see God. So, it says, for instance, no one lights a lamp and puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. Like, it's saying nobody goes to Walmart, buys a lamp, and puts a blanket over it. Nobody does that unless something is wrong. And Scripture is saying, no believer with the light of God, with the light of Jesus in their heart, keeps that to themselves. It is unnatural and it is impossible if God is really in you, who is truly the light of this world, if God is truly in you, it is unnatural and impossible for you to not want to be the light. And to shine to everyone, acid boys included. So in the same way, interesting, in the same way, go and shout at everybody. How great. In the same way, go and hold signs in people's faces. You say, I can read Pastor Tom. Don't try to pull that on me. In the same way. Here's how you shine. Through your good deeds. You see that trash at work instead of complaining about the person whose job that is, instead of just one more general negative comment like, nobody cares and they're all this. Just pick it up. And, and why? Not so that you can look good. And we as, as a congregation, when we give blood or we do the many things that we do, it is not so that the church can look good. It is to broadcast and it is to shine a bright light on the God who is in us that causes us to do this stuff. So that everyone not will say, man, what a great church. But so that everyone will praise God. God. And if they do say, what a great church, that's true. But if they do say that, it's our opportunity then to say, but it's a, it's a group of people that are shining because there's a God who loves and a God who forgives and a God full of grace who lives in our heart and he causes us to shine. So we are called to create, and we're called to help get things back to zero, and we're called to illuminate. And, and when we continue to do the good things for God in our community and in our world, it is not to make us look good, but it is to tell others about it. But somehow, in some way, you are going to have to be even more involved than that. 
you are going to have to use your mouth and say. And God, God was great, and God helped us as we improved the park, and God did this, but you know what? It's because God is a God of love. Would you like to come and, and, and meet with us at this church? Your people, you know, we're, they're serving God. Would you like to come? Or somehow to work and to have spiritual conversations about what makes your heart full of light. Somehow, you and I have to go even the next step if we're truly going to illuminate because God wants us to be a people that will shine. It's a different way to think. And it's a good reminder from Scripture. There's a bigger picture instead of just falling into the general negative tones of this world and being one more complaining voice. We create stuff. Or we pick up the trash. But in all, we're doing so to illuminate the beauty of who God is.